Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at the variance inflation factor which is a way to help us figure out if we have multicollinearity in our design matrix. So let's jump right in. So we're going to assume that we're in the multiple linear regression setting so y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. Now our beta is a k plus 1 by 1 vector. Now we will need to center and scale the design matrix when we look at variance inflation factors in we couple different settings. So model one is this. So we have beta zero, then our first regressor is centered and scaled, where you know this is the essentially the um, the norm that makes it a, a length of one, beta one, and for all k regressors we center it and scale. I would defer you to previous video number 39 in my playlist, Generalized Linear Models Regression, for more details on this. Now, the, the design matrix can be thought of as this, a column of ones, and then a matrix of all the centered and scaled regressors, times this beta vector, right? So beta zero goes there, and then beta one you know, vector is beta one, beta two, through beta k, and that's multiplied there plus epsilon. Now it's quite easy to show that the least squares estimate for beta zero in a centered model is y bar and we're not going to do that in this video but if we plug in the least squares estimate and subtract it to the other side then we get this model right so it's a it's a hundred percent the same right but we subtract the mean of y in every case and we're left with this so the design matrix becomes this. So it's the vector y minus, you know, this is a constant vector ones, you know, and, and times the mean. So it's, it's like subtracting the mean off of each component. Um, x star is actually the, the same as this x star, but in this beta one contains beta one through beta k and then some error. Now, in either model used, we focus on x star. Right, that uh, for the development of variance inflation factors, we don't really concern ourselves with beta zero. Now, um, we need to develop this, so we're actually going to spend a little more on a page, page and a half, developing this, trying to get an intuition. Then we're going to introduce the definition that you see in books on page three, um, because it's not really intuitive what it what it is, what it means. And so that's why I'm uh, big development here. So stick with me and it'll all make sense in the end. So here we have K predictor variables, X1 through XK. And I kind of think of this as three different scenarios or cases. The first one I'm going to call the ideal case. And that's each variable adds 100% unique information and they're uncorrelated. Now mathematically we'll call that an orthogonal. And it means the dot product of any two vectors is zero. Um, and this is the ideal case. So rarely we're in the ideal case. But it is, that's the perfect setting. Now, uh, case two, I'm going to call the in-between case, you know, because we're going to have the best case and the worst case. So this is the in-between. So the variables are correlated, which means there is some overlap in the information between the variables. So the, so the different x's have some correlation between them. Now, this is an in-between case. Now, if the correlation is re really close to zero, that means we're close to the ideal case. If this is close to one, the correlation between vector, you know, predictive variables is close to one, means we're close to the worst case. And, and pretty much every time every regression I've ever run I've always been in this in-between case. It's never ideal and it's never the worst case. Now the worst case is at least one variable can be written as a linear combination of the other variables. That's just the worst case and matter of fact if that's the case then there's an infinite number of least square solutions to our model. Um, now as a reminder in a previous video 22, where we looked at least squares estimates, and uh, previous video 39, where we looked at centering and scaling. Uh, you can review those. 
So 22 means the 22th video in this playlist of generalized linear models regression. And this is the 39th video. So in model one, we were in this setting. So X transpose X. Remember, there's a column of ones, X star, and then this is, of course, the transpose. This matrix uh, product ends up being this. And you can see that because one transpose is like is adding the columns of this but since it's been centered when you add it it actually is zero so that's why there's a zero vector here in the same way here this is a zero vector now this is a row vector column vector and then this is whatever it is now to take the inverse of a block diagonal matrix you just take the inverse of the of the, the block diagonals so um, and so the variance Remember, this is video um, 22, where we look at the variance of the, our least squares estimates. Now, remember in model one, beta zero is included in that, is this. So it's the inverse of this matrix. And, and, the, and, and as we said, it's the inverse of the block diagonal. So the inverse of n is 1 over n, and the inverse of this is whatever it is. Now, in model two, oh. I guess this is a note. So in model one, the X star, remember that's the columns of all the other predictor variables. This ends up being the co uh, correlation matrix. And, and we, we prove that and show that in previous video 39 in the list. Okay. And so this, this is the case. So we're in the in-between case sort of. Well, I mean, it, if there's correlation between our variables, we're in the in-between case. If these are all zero, that's the ideal case. And if one of these correlations is one, that's the absolute worst case. Now in model two, we only focused on the X star, right? Because the, the beta zero, we subtracted to the other side. And then when we look at the variance of the beta estimates, now remember beta zero is not included in this. We just we get this, which is which is the same as this right here, hundred percent the same. Now for the variance, uh, now here here's a definition of the variance inflation factor. Okay, the, the variance inflation factor of beta i is the increase in the variance of the estimate of beta i over the ideal case when we were in the in between case. Now, we will not consider the worst case scenario, but the in-between case can be pretty darn close to the worst case. And I suggest going to previous video 40 for a little more detail on that. So, we're looking at the variances of these. And if we're in the ideal case, these are all zero, that's the identity matrix. And, and maybe let's let's do this here. So the ideal case, this matrix. Remember that's the correlation matrix. And if there's no correlation between our predictive variables, it's the identity matrix. So the variance of our beta estimates, which is this, but this is the identity. The inverse of the identity is the identity. So the and and so this is it. So the variance of any beta i hat. So the least squares estimate is just sigma squared, so the model variance. Now, in the in-between case, remember X star transpose X star is the correlation matrix, so the variance is this, right? So now, the for the variance of the beta I hat, it's actually the i diagonal of this matrix, right? So, um, What's the uh, is what's the increase in this case over this case? Well, the sigma squared is the same. So if we divide this by this, what's left over? Now remember, we're looking at the variance of beta i. So it's the ith diagonal. It's whatever that number is. That's the increase over the ith case. So it's actually just the variance. That's the inflation factor, right? So we can just look at the output and find the variance. Well, assuming our model's been centered and scared, scaled, that's the variance inflation factor. Okay, that's what it is. And now, when we look at the definition on page three, 
it, it's not really going to resemble that. So let's derive the, the a, a, an expression for the ith variance of our beta i hat. Okay, we want that i diagonal of this matrix. Okay, so first let's let's derive it for beta one. Beta one hat that is. So let's. This is our design matrix that has the k plus k uh, predictor variable center and scale. Can separate it, partition it into this. So this is a vector. So it's an n by one vector centered and scaled predict predictor variable one. And this is the k minus one other predictor variable. So it's a matrix that's n by k minus one. Right. So look, now let's look at this, but in this partition format. Remember, this is a vector. This is a matrix. So when you do this multiplication, we get this. Now, this is what's called a partitioned matrix. So this really is a k by k matrix, but we're going to partition it into like a two by two format. Now, I have a video called the in, uh, inverse of a partition matrix that deals. 100% with this. We give the formula, we prove the formula works, and then we show you how that it was developed. It's actually, it's a pretty cool video. Inverse for partition matrix. Now, since this is two by two, you know, in form, the inverse matrix is going to be two by two. And it's actually this. And so this is, these are three elements that I'm not presenting because mainly it, it's kind of, it adds a lot to the video, which I don't think we need. But this is the, the first component. So the inverse of this, the first component is this. Okay? And we need the, the first diagonal element, which is this. So this is actually the variance of, well, well this, actually this is the variance inflation factor for beta 1. That's it. That's the definition. Okay? So let's look at that. So the variance of beta 1 is sigma squared. Remember it's once time, time, and this is the first diagonal element, which we just showed was this. Okay. So now the variance inflation factor for 1 is actually this element right here. So this is it. It's the first column centered and scaled. First column centered and scaled. And then x2 is the k minus 1, you know, other uh, regressor variables. Boom, that's it. That's the variance inflation factor. Now, while we did, I picked the first column to be the first variable, we actually could have grabbed the ith variable and put it first in the column because it doesn't really matter, and then recalculated this. Instead of ones, we'd, it'd be i's. So the variance inflation factor for beta i. Now I divide by sigma squared so that it gets gets rid of that is this. So this is it. This is the variance inflation factor for beta i. And to me that's just that's so cool to know what it is. It's actually just the variance of beta i, you know, divided off the mean square error, the the error variance. Okay? So xi is the ith regressor centered and scaled and x2 is all the other regressors centered and scaled. So, so that's it. Okay? So intuitively, boom, that's it. Now the definition for variance inflation factor that you see in books, and it, you, it really won't resemble that at first. So I need notation first. Let's let ri squared be the coefficient of determination when xi is regressed onto the other k minus one regressor variables. So normally we take y and regress it onto the k predictor variables, we're going to take the ith regressor variable and try to use the other k minus one variables to predict it. And in that prediction, there is a coefficient of determination. That's what ri squared is. Now the formula is this. The variance inflation factor of beta i is 1 over 1 minus ri squared. And this is the definition that you see in books. And it makes sense because let's say that the k minus one predictive variables predict the ith regressor quite well. So ri squared is going to be close to one. So this is going to be a small number, which then makes this number a big, big number, which says the variance inflation is going to be big. 
if the k minus one predictive variables can't predict anything towards the ith regressor, this is going to be zero. And, and remember, we're in the ideal case. So one over one is one. That's the ideal case. So there's no variance in face. But the, the, the big question is, how is that this? And that's what we want to show. That's what I want to prove. So when you look at this formula, it's actually just the variance of the the I predictor variable. Of course, divided out the mean square error. That's it. That's the variance inflation factor. Um, so I would suggest going to uh, previous video oh, 27, where we look at partitioning the sum of squares uh, total into what's called regression sum of squares and residual sum of squares. So now remember, we're in the setting that we're using the k minus 1 predictive variables to predict the ith variable. And all these are centered and, and scaled. Now, the total sum of squares is written like this, xi transpose i minus j xi, where j is this matrix here, when these are uh, uh, n by 1 vectors of 1s. Now, usually this is y. But since xi is acting like y, we have to put xi there. Now the sum of squares residual is this, xi transpose i minus h xi, where h is actually the hat matrix of this model. So it's the design matrix, you know, x2, x2 transpose, x2 inverse, x2 transpose. So this is the residual sum of squares. So now the coefficient of determination using this model is a sum of squares regression over sum of squares total. And then if we look, now this is comma, so if we then if we look at 1 minus the coefficient determination, we get the sum of squares residual over the sum of squares total, right? Because this 1 is sum of squares total divided by sum of squares total, and then sum of squares total minus sum of squares regression is the sum of squares re residual, so we get this. Now if we take 1 over that, it's just the reciprocal, so we get the sum of squares total over the sum of squares residual. Now, and so we put in the quadratic forms for these, you know, that we got up, up here. Now let's multiply the x into these, and we get this, right? And now this is where the magic happens. We have to see what these are. So xi transpose xi. Since it's been scaled, this is 1. We can just put the number 1 there. And then this, uh, J, ends up being a, predict, a perpendicular projection matrix onto the constant vector. It actually projects it onto the mean of whatever vector we're using. So um, Xi transpose J produces a constant vector of the mean of Xi. But since it's been centered, it, the mean is 0. So this is the 0 vector. And so this is 0. So we just get 1. And then it's whatever that is. So this is 1 over this. Now, let's take this to the numerator. So then we have to raise it to the, you know, the minus 1, right? So then that's what this is. So, so we have xi transpose xi. So we have xi. The hat matrix is this, which is that. And we have xi. So that's it. So this is the variance inflation factor beta i. Right? So we took 1 over 1 minus the regression and showed it was this. But remember, that's exactly what we showed that the variance inflation factor is. It's just the variance you know, with the mean square divided off. It's the increase in the variance over the ideal setting. Now, there's only rules of thumb, again, for the variance inflation factor. And if it's... And if it's 5 or more, then there's some collinearity. And if it's greater than 10, we consider that high collinearity. And that's it. So that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.